Hello everyone, this is Tony and this is a preview of what we are going to do in this tutorial. It's a three part tutorial and we'll start with the basics of integrating 3ds Max particles with FingerFX simulation. Then we'll talk about partitioning the particles in Krakatoa, casting them and how to render. Then with a brief overview of MagmaFlow editor, we'll go to After Effects and talk about compositing issues. I covered few things that's already shown in previous tutorial just to make this entire tutorial independent and fully informative. Hope you guys like it, so let's get started. Alright, so here we are in 3ds Max and make sure you are using generic units so that your values match mine. And also it is very convenient to deal with film effects using generic units. So let's drag a film effects grid here. Then go to help us. Film effects and create an object source. Now let's create a simple spear to use as a smoke emitter and place it inside the grid. Then add this to the film effects object source object list. Now let's open the Fume Effects interface and add in our source. In the General tab, make sure Adaptive is checked. This will continuously adjust the effective volume of the grid according to the simulation, thus reducing time and file size. The sensitivity determines how tightly this adaptive grid follows the simulation. We will leave it at 0.01 for the time being. Set the end frame according to the animation. And the most important thing to do here is to save the velocity channel so that the 3ds Max particles will follow the film effects simulation. To do that, click on this set button here, select the velocity channel and move it to the left box. And now the velocity information will get saved when we simulate. Select a path to save the simulation. And set the playback range according to the animation. In the simulation tab, set the quality to maximum and also the maximum iterations to the highest possible value, which is 900. This will increase the simulation time, but will give a much better result where we have fast moving objects. And for creative particle animations, there is a good chance of facing such situations most often. So better leave it at max. Now let's hit the simulation button. For this particular animation, we only need the smoke channel, so I will turn off fuel here. And you can notice the fuel channel is not getting exported anymore. Now if I hit simulate again, we will only have smoke here. Unlike the effect of gravity on solid objects, it will cause buoyancy here and cause the smoke to rise up. If I turn this down, you notice the smoke doesn't rise up anymore. And as I gradually increase the gravity, the smoke rises up. Vorticity creates small curls in the simulation, giving it a more detailed look. The good thing about film effects simulation driven 3ds Max particle effect is that you don't need a highly detailed simulation to get good results which takes a lot of time usually and a lot of disk space as well. Here you can see the effect of vorticity on 
two simulations with same resolution. The one without vorticity looks very flat and uninteresting while the other one looks quite interesting and both these simulations have the same resolution only the difference is in the vorticity settings. We can add artificial disturbance to any specific axis or axis together by dialing in values here. We will leave this at zero in this case. The smoke buoyancy causes the smoke to rise or fall at a rate that we set here. Negative values will push upward and positive value will push the smoke downward. But in our animation we want the smoke to stay where it is so we'll set this to zero. Smoke will start to dissipate once it reaches the dissipation minimum density. If I set this to 1, smoke will start dissipating where it reaches the density value of 1. And the rate at which it will dissipate depends on the dissipation strength. A higher dissipation strength will make the smoke fade away very quickly. And a lower value will let the smoke linger for a long time before it disappears. Let's leave these at their default values and we can change them later as we need. One important parameter that I skipped by mistake is the velocity dampening. If we increase this value, the motion of the smoke will slow down due to increase in internal friction and eventually come to halt after a certain distance. We will leave this value at zero for the time being and let's now animate our object and see how that affects the smoke. So we will make a simple animation like this. and hit the simulation button. Let's turn off gravity and check that our other settings are alright so okay so we will re-simulate this as we can see it is not doing much just the smoke appears as it enters the grid and leaves a trail behind. So let's go to the object source tab and with the source selected increase the object's velocity down here. And now if we simulate we can see the mushroom kind of effect in the direction of the object's motion. Let's stop the simulation and increase this value to 10 and now the effect is even more prominent and also the smoke is being pushed faster. Unlike the object's velocity, the extra velocity pushes the smoke in random directions, creating the mushroom kind of effect in random directions as well. But since we need controlled effect on the smoke for our animation, we will leave this at point 0.1 and also set the object's velocity to 5. Now let's make our source stationary and use other objects to affect the smoke. So let's delete the animation and create another sphere here. And animate it so that it passes through the smoke cloud.
we will add this view to the object list and hit simulate as you see this object is not having much effect on the smoke right now If we select the spear here and increase the speed multiplier, it will start affecting the smoke more. As you may see it is creating the same mushroom kind of effect here. So this way we can use objects to affect stationary smoke clouds and create some interesting visuals. Based on this technique, I have already created the scene, so let's open that. So this is the animated rig we are going to use to drive our film effects simulation. I'm using a spear to generate smoke here. Buoyancy set to 0 and vorticity to 1. The other spears that we are going to use to affect our smoke have a speed multiplier of 5 each and the grid resolution is fairly low as you can see here. To save time, I have already simulated this and if I play back the animation, you can see the results. Now let's open the particle flow and use this simulated data to drive our particles. I will bring an empty flow here of VMFX birth, VMFX flow and an edge test which you will see in a while why. And lastly a delete operator. Now we have to select the grid as the birth source. Set the creation time as required and keep the birth rate fairly low for the time being. We can bump this up later while casting. If the jitter is set to zero, the particles inside each voxel will appear at its center which will give a very grid kind of look to the particles. In the channels rollout, we select smoke as it is the channel we have saved during the simulation. Particles will be generated in only those areas where the smoke density is between the minimum and maximum value that we set here. A default value of 1 to 30 will generate particles where the smoke density is greater than 1 and less than 30. You can set the minimum value to 0 but that would generate particles everywhere as there is a little amount of smoke everywhere inside the grid. So again to keep the animation neat, a value of 1 here is alright considering that we have set the smoke amount to 2 here. If you change the amount here, then you may need to adjust the minimum value to make the smoke create well defined animated shapes. If you check the invert box here, particles will be generated where the smoke density is below the minimum value and above the maximum value. We will leave this unchecked in our case. Let's select the FumeFX grid for the FumeFX follow operator. 
The default value of one makes the particles follow the simulation exactly in terms of speed and direction. The operator acts on the particles which are inside the fluid. You might think how this is different than the speed multiplier here. The speed multiplier here determines the speed of the particles only when they are born. But the follow operator makes sure that the particles follow the motion of the fluid throughout the simulation as if they are a part of the fluid. This follow operator affects all the particles if the influence is set to 100 and none if it is set to 0. In most cases you will need to leave it at 100 but some interesting spike kind of effects can be achieved if you set this below 100. I suggest you experiment with this and come up with some interesting animations. But in our case we will leave this at 100. In this particular animation we will leave these two boxes unchecked so that the particles won't get deleted as they go out of the grid. Turning this on will make the particles disappear suddenly as they pass the grid boundary, which may not look good. Instead we will use an edge test and give it some variation which will make the particles disappear smoothly after a certain time span. Well, that's pretty much all about linking fume effect simulation to particle flow. Now we will cast out the particles, but before that, let's scroll a few frames and check if everything is done properly. And then we will cast these particles using Krakatoa.